Education. I'm from UCSI University, pursuing my civil engineering degree. I'm currently having my internship at Johan R2 Desert Park City as an intern site engineer. Today we're going to be talking about point load test. The PLD test is something that we do on site to test the rock strength. So what we do is usually we put the rock sample in, the in between the conical plates and then we will increase the load slowly until failure occurs. So this is um, this is why this is how we do the PLD test. The PLD test is very very cheap, uh, so it can be conducted on site. So before we go into the details of how do we uh, measure the dimensions and everything, just let me briefly explain to you the parts of the machine. So first we have the loop indicator where it shows you how much force we have applied onto the rock sample. Then this one is what we call as the conical basin where we hold the rock sample. This one is hydraulic piston. How do we increase the length? We increase by pumping the hand pump. As we do this action, the hydraulic will go from the hand pump to the hydraulic piston and then the length will increase. This is how we uh, increase the load onto the rock sample. Okay, so this is where I will usually do the preparation on site before putting the rock sample in between the uh, conical basin of the corner test machine. So as you can see, this is a very beautiful rock sample. And then um, the rock sample could, you know, varies in size and shape. Um, so that's a recommended size. Um, according to ASTM D5731, uh, the dimension of the rock should never exceed 85 mm. It should be in between 30 to 85. So the test we conduct on site here is called irregular lump. As you can see, the rock sample is not very beautiful in size. It's not a regular shape. It's irregular lump. So uh, the the, the, the recommended size and you know how do we usually do it will be shown as the picture below. So the current picture shows the specimen requirement for each and every different test. For A is diametral test, for B is axial test, for C is block test, for D is irregular lump. As we mentioned earlier, today we are going to talk about the irregular lump test. So here are the specific requirements for the irregular lump test where the D depth has to be in between 30% to 100% of the width, W, and the length of the rock sample has to be more than half of the depth. Okay. So um, when we measure the dimension of the rock sample, we have to take three dimensions, mainly the depth, the width, and the bottom width. So we have to take the average width. Okay, according to ASTM D5731, we have to take the smallest width of the rock sample. So smallest width means that it can be here, or here, or here, or here, or here. Everywhere else on the rock sample is a width, but we have to take the smallest width according to ASTM. But there's also another, there's also a, a requirement that we have to achieve that our depth has to be in between 30% of the width or one, 30 to one, 30 to 100 percent of the width. Which is why we always take the average, the average depth, the average width and the average width. After we measure, and then we will record it down. We will be measuring using the vernier caliber. Okay, so for example, this is the rock sample that we are using. The depth that I will be measuring would be from here to here. Okay, it will be around 38. Okay, and then the width will be at the perpendicular to the depth. So, it will be here. Okay, 59. Okay, that's the first width. Then the second width will be 55. Okay. After measuring, then we have to record it. And then we'll be taking the rock sample to the final test machine and then we will test it out. Okay. Make a cross. So this point will be the point I have applied the pressure. So we have to put the rock sample in between the conical platen. So after it touches the rock sample, and as you can see, this thing is hanging here. That's because as if we continue to uh, pump the thing down, and then it will increase. The, it will apply the pressure on the rock sample. So now what we have to do is we have to erase the zero error. This will put it on hold. Okay, then we will slowly increase the pressure to the rock sample. Okay. 
as we slowly increase, then the load indicator will also increase in value. we subject the rock sample uh, into pressure and then we will record down the uh, load that we applied to the rock sample and then we will use a series of formula to determine the uh, IR safety, the point load test index of the rock sample. First, we have to calculate the average width, then we have to calculate the cross-section area. After that, we calculate the equivalent core diameter. Next, we calculate the size correction factor, F, followed by calculating the uncorrected point load index. Finally, we will use the uncorrected point load index to multiply with the correction factor to get the corrected point load index, IS50. So here is the sample calculation of the rock sample that we just tested. To summarize all, here is a summarized formula. After we calculated the PLT index, we can correlate it to the UCS, unit axial compressive strength of the rock on site. Here is the equation that we use to calculate. K is a factor that is a site-specific correlation factor for UCS and PLT. The value of K ranges from 20 to 24. Here at our site, we take K as 20 for granite. Okay. There will be different challenges as I face uh, that I will face uh, when I do the PLT test. One of it is the rock sample having a very irregular shape. Okay, a shape like this, a triangular prism, but I would call it. Uh, it's very hard for us to apply the measure, uh, the pressure on to the rock because here it's not flat, while here we have a flat surface. Another thing is about this kind of sample is that it's hard for us to um, measure our dimension, especially the width. Because usually it cannot fulfill uh, the minimum requirement of like the, the, the D, the depth of it has to be in between 30 to 100% of the width. It cannot fulfill that because usually the depth will be more than the width itself. Because upper width is very small and lower width is very big. So taking this kind of sample um, is hard for us to carry out the PLT depth but it has solutions. When we take the sample, what I will do is I will take the and both endings of the rock sample so I will take this as a dimension this as a dimension and then I'll take this as a dimension okay by doing so I will have three W three width and I'll divide by three taking the average of average width of it and then what about the depth so the depth I'll only be taking around here Okay, that's because when I subject this kind of rock sample onto the point test machine, I will try to use the machine to flatten it. So, um, obviously when it got flattened, it won't be around here, it will be around here. So this will be the depth. Okay. This is a very a good example of an irregular rock sample. So here we have a very flat surface, while well, on the top we don't have a flat surface. So what I meant by using the machine to flatten the surface is that we hold the rock sample in between the conical plate turn, where we find where we want to crush. So usually I will be taking here as the depth, and then the width, for top and bottom width, and then as we hold, and then we will try to use the machine to flatten it by just crushing a little bit on top and then just release and then do it again then release and then again and then we will erase the zero error for whatever force that it has applied on to the rock and then we will only test the rock sample. This action will put the rock sample on hold so that it won't slip off from the machine. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.